I'm gonna go ahead and jump into some of the nifty tools and I hope that this helps your efficiency when you mark up plans. I think one of the first things that I'll show you is I'm gonna go up here to my toolbox and I'm just gonna do a little label. One way to be a little bit more efficient with copying paste is if you hold down the control and hover over, you can basically create you know, an unlimited amount of copies here just by holding the control C. Not too many people know that. Another thing too is if you press one of these polylines or really any sort of markup, if you hold down shift you can do straight lines in 45 degrees. So let's say if you were wanting to measure something or mark something up in a straight line, if you hold down the shift, bada boom, it's a straight line. Also, another thing that I use pretty often is you have a toolbox. I'm gonna go ahead and click this properties over here. I'm gonna click this label. One thing that you can do is that you can set this as your default. So let's say if I wanted to change maybe this color to green, uh, let's say if I really like that label, I can set that as my default. That way, whenever I use Bluebeam, it is my default. Now, if I wanted to add that to my toolbox, you can add it to a tool chest and you can save it for later. So I can go ahead and add to my tools. You can also have different groups of tools, which I find very convenient. I'm gonna go ahead and add it to my tools. Now, whenever I go to my toolbox here, my tool chest, I can just directly place right into the plan. So let's say, you know, this comes in handy when I'm making different markups. Maybe a certain color means something else. So maybe red is all the drainage markups. Maybe all of the green are different comments from the municipality. Another tip, if you have the pan right here, you know, I really wanna select all these and delete them, but I have the pan. Well, if you just hold down shift, and click, you can go ahead and just drag all of those. You can do a right click, delete. Again, I'm in pan, you can hold down shift and select different things. One thing that I find very helpful that I don't think enough people use is the view. So you can do split view. And this helps when you're reviewing plans against, you know, maybe like a cross section or a drainage detail. I find that to be very, very helpful. That way you're not just going back and forth between the different pages. It helps save a ton of time. And let's say, you know, if you want to get back to where you were, you can do control Z or you can just go back up to view and do unsplit. And actually you can keep splitting this up into thirds, which I never really do that, but if you needed to do it, there it is. So let's say for some reason your pages got way out of whack and you wanted to just number them by the sheets. One thing that you can do is you can go to your thumbnails and do create page labels. And I'm gonna go ahead and do a page region. So I'm gonna go over to the sheet and just select the region where the sheets are going to populate those sheet numbers. So then I'll select and I'll say my region. And then it'll ask me if I want to select to all pages. I'm gonna say yes and let's see what happens. Now this only works if your sheets are all you know lining up properly. Um, I, I've seen it happen where if your sheets aren't lined up properly, you can get a weird thing going on here. So voila, all my page numbers are exactly the sheet. I don't think enough people know about this one. I'm gonna go ahead and do a length dimension. I'm gonna snap from here to there. I know that this scales one inch equals 50, at least I think it is, I'll double check. I know it is if it's the exact linear feet of that line that I just drew. So not too many people know this, but you can actually double click in here and you can change the number to the dimension that you're trying to get and it'll adjust accordingly. So that'll be exactly 140. So if I go to 160, I should expect it to go to 20 more feet beyond that. It won't work if you end up changing the feet here. It doesn't work. You just have to change the number. Another thing that I find nifty, if you go over here to the search bar, let's say if I wanted to find everything that said 22 foot DE, and I'm only typing that because I see it right there, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and search that and hopefully it, it, it finds it. Okay, so it's finding all of them. And I found this really helpful. I had a project where I had to go and change all of the street names and I just wanted to make sure that the old one didn't carry over. So what you can do is once you search something, you can go up here to results. I'm gonna do select all and you have some options over here. You can highlight or underline, squiggle, whatever you wanna do and it'll actually highlight. Let me do highlight. I'm gonna highlight the checked. Now, a thing about this highlight is it will use your default highlight. So if you didn't want it green, you can go up to this highlighter tool and just make sure you change your, your properties of, of your highlight. So let's say if you really didn't want that, that green, uh, maybe you can do like pink 
Let's highlight and voila, it's now pink. So that's really, really useful if you're trying to find certain things and it ends up highlighting them. That way it, it clearly stands out. And I think it's really good for when you're doing markups or certain revisions. That way it'll highlight all the oddities and you can click here to maybe your oddity that you changed. Maybe you changed it in CAD and then you can select it as green and keep doing your markups. You know, th this is just ways that you can improve your efficiency. Also, if you're not using the format painter, what are you doing? So let's say if I wanted to make that one green, you do have a format painter. So you guys should be using that one pretty often. Okay, here's another one that I like. So let's say if you were to draw, you know, something on this plan set and you wanted to show this little drawing that you did on the exact same location of another sheet or the exact same location of the same sheet, you know, if you were to recreate a new PDF, what you can do is you can copy this guy. I'm just gonna go to the next sheet and you can do control shift V and it'll pop up in the same exact spot. Can't help but show the dynamic fill option. A lot of people love this one. You can go up to tools. You can go up to measure. I'm gonna go to dynamic fill. You can add a boundary if you want or you can just start filling. I need to make sure that we create an area right here. So I'm gonna go to this guy right here because I know it's a an area measurement. So now I'm ready to create my dynamic fill. I'm just gonna hold it down and voila. Now it didn't work exactly. So you have to make sure that your lines are closed, but maybe, you know, maybe we can get some of these lots. Let's do this. It's so satisfying. So let's say if you had to do areas of all the lots, you know, this will help you get that area. So let's say I needed the area of those lots. I can press apply. And I know that the scale is one inch equals 50. I'm gonna do apply. Ah, oh, I'm a complete dummy. All right, well, I kind of screwed up, but it was good to show you, you know, different troubleshooting methods. <laughs> it ended up getting the perimeter. A perimeter, so you're actually gonna wanna hit that guy. And this is actually cool. You can use different ones. So I can have an area and a perimeter. Let's see how well that works. I'm gonna do that button again. Let's do this. I know the landscape architects really like using this because they have to get areas of all the different sod. So I'm gonna go ahead and press apply. Perfect, so it got me a perimeter and it got me an area instantly. So, you know, what I could have done is I could have done these little endpoints and snap, 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 go all the way around, but uh, this sped it up by nearly almost probably 10th the time. I don't always recommend you doing this. It just depends on the time and the place and the need, but you can use this text editor. Again, I don't really suggest you do it because you're gonna have to go back in AutoCAD and, and go update your plans. But let's say if you really needed to get something out, you didn't have time to replot, you can do this edit text, you can add to it. It automatically reads the PDF and you can type whatever you want and then it shows up there. So that's pretty cool. Another quick tip, if you just press G, that opens up the snapshot. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a snapshot right there. And let's say if I wanted to add that to the next sheet, I can do that right here by Control V and voila. So it just takes like a nice clean snapshot. I can change the fill color if I wanted, maybe to like gray, just to let people know, hey, I added this. Uh, I can do a line width around, just to let people know that this is a markup. Let's say if I needed to add up all the mitered ends on this page and make a legend, I can go up here to the count tool. But before I even do that, I'm just gonna go ahead and check my properties. Uh, this is really important. So I'm gonna go ahead and change my subject to, I'm gonna type in MES, I wanna count all the MES. Is. I want to use a checkbox and I think I'm ready to go. So let's do that guy, that guy. Oh, well, looks like I only see two. So now I'm going to go make a legend. Let's click that one right there. I'm going to right click. I'm going to do legend. I'm going to create new legend and I'm going to put that right here. So now I've done some quantity takeoffs and I have two MESs. Now, if you wanted to add to this legend, you can go back up to the count tool but just make sure that you change your subject and the properties. So let's say if I wanted to add up curb inlets, maybe I'll make that a different shape. I'm gonna add up those, maybe right there and right there. And then I'm gonna select it again, right click, and I'm gonna add to that legend. Now here's the beauty of this. If you go to the count tool again, and let's say if we've added new curb inlets, watch how that automatically starts updating. 
to see how it updated. Really important for doing quantity takeoffs. Last but not least, uh, you know, if you want this little cursor here, all the crosshairs, a lot of people don't realize it, but it's really helpful when you do straight lines and markups. You can go to view and then you can go up to here to full screen crosshair. Let me turn it off to show you what it looks like without it. I don't love that. I like having that crosshair and voila. You can also do a ruler. I never really use that, but let's see. Yeah, you have like a ruler up there. I guess that's kind of cool if you're trying to measure things. I could probably show you more. Bluebeam is limitless, but that's all I have for today. I hope that these tips help you. If you have any questions, feel free to shoot me a comment below, and I hope to see you in the next video. Peace out. If I'm being honest, I think about you all the time I do. I really do. I need you to promise.